SpaceX Starship just completed all tests required for the next launch. Hey, space enthusiasts, get ready to embark on interstellar journey with us today as we dive into the latest and greatest from SpaceX. Buckle up because SpaceX is rewriting the rules of space exploration and the updates are nothing short of mind-blowing. The excitement is tangible from the fiery success of Starship 28 and Super Heavy Booster 10 static fire tests to the thrilling anticipation of their upcoming third orbital flight. But hold on, there's more to uncover. We have got the exciting details on a groundbreaking test featuring the Starship Lunar Lander Elevator prototype. And of course, we can't ignore the man behind the vision. Elon Musk, who's been dropping bombshells about the future of Starship and SpaceX's audacious mission to colonize Mars. Stay tuned, because this is one of SpaceX's updates you won't want to miss. But before starting the video, if you are a new tour channel, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you will never miss any updates in the future. Let's start the video. On December 20, SpaceX tested Starship 28 six engines in a full-length static burn as part of getting it ready for takeoff. It was believed that SpaceX had finished the ship's 28 test and the vehicle was prepared for launch because of full duration Six-engine static fire is typically the last pre-launch test for a Starship. However, SpaceX indicated they needed additional testing to ensure Ship 28's readiness when they began Ship 28 testing on Friday, December 29. On December 29, early in the morning, propellant loading into the ship commenced. Ship 28 fired one of its center sea level Raptor engines for about five seconds after loading the necessary amount of propellant. The purpose of the test was to show an in-orbit engine burns flight-like starting. Over a week ago, SpaceX attempted to test Rocket 10's static fire. On December 21, however, all of the liquid oxygen was vented out, indicating a deviation from the norm. Normally, during an aborted test or launch, the propellants are returned to storage tanks at the tank farm. Nevertheless, their two consecutive attempts were aborted even before loading propellant into the booster at the required level. An issue arose that hindered the regular process of recovering liquid oxygen. It's likely related to the most recent improvements made to the oxygen side of the tank farm's heat exchangers, pumps, valves, and plumbing. There may have been problems with a liquid oxygen distribution line that went to the launch mount. Over the next three days, teams worked to resolve problems with the launch mount and tank farm. On December 27, the liquid oxygen pumps and pipe valves were purged to make sure everything was working properly and that the propellant was still flowing for several minutes. There was significant venting from the launch mount, which suggested that the liquid oxygen delivery pipes had also been purged on that particular day. Worker access to the booster's oxygen tank was made possible by the scaffolding that was built on the launch mount. Upon verification, all problems had been resolved and everything was operating as intended. On December 29, SpaceX started loading propellants into Booster 10 for engine testing, and teams started getting ready for Booster 10's static fire testing. This came after the Ship 28 static fire test. The newly installed pumps at the tank farm engine chill started after the propellants were loaded to the required amount, which allowed for a speedier liquid oxygen loading than in the previous testing. After that, the Booster's 33 Raptors were ignited for around 10 seconds followed by the water deluge system. Later, SpaceX verified that the booster's 33 engines ran continuously throughout the test. Following testing, the deluge mechanism functioned as intended and the launch pad was unharmed. After the 33 engine booster static fire and two Starship static fire tests were finished, it's safe to state, in my opinion, that Ship 28 and Booster 10 have finished all pre-launch testing. If SpaceX decides it's not yet ready, to conclude the pre-launch test campaign, extra testing will take place in the next few days. Per Starbase General Manager Catherine Leaders, the next milestone is stacking Ship 28 and Top Booster 10 for the launch. Starship's third integrated flight test is scheduled during the first quarter of 2024 by SpaceX, Federal Aviation Administration, which is presently looking into what caused the disaster in November is still the body from which the corporation must acquire a launch license. After getting confirmation that SpaceX has made the required corrections to guarantee safety and compliance, the fall will provide a permit. 
Heavy Lift Booster 12 was moved early on Friday morning to SpaceX's Massey test facility. A thrust simulator stand at Massey will shortly undergo cryogenic proof testing for the booster. To replicate the force of Raptor engines, several hydraulic rams placed on the test platform will apply force to the booster's AFT section during the test. Recently, Starship 30, scheduled to fly alongside Booster 12 in the fifth integrated flight test, was also relocated to the Massey test site in the next days on a Starship Trust Simulator stand at Massey. The ship will undergo cryo-proof testing. Additionally, pistons are used in the ship thrust simulator stand to simulate the force used by the Raptor engines in cryogenic testing. These kinds of cryo-proof tests, in addition to guaranteeing the plumbing's dependability, give engineers the crucial information they need to assess whether a rocket can withstand different kinds of pressures during flight. A Starship launch tower, segment, and two horizontal storage tanks that departed Kennedy Space Center on December 18 and arrived at Port of Brownsville on December 29, will undergo static fire testing after the rocket and the ship undergo cryo-proof tests. For the past three years, there have been plans to construct a second launch, Tower at Starbase. The new tower will be situated next to the current launch tower as part of the 2020 Starbase launch site expansion plan. SpaceX has completed the construction of seven prefabricated launch tower pieces, including a Starship launch tower at Kennedy Space Center. Two of these sections will be prefabricated at Starbase and combined with the seven sections from Kennedy. A new horizontal storage tank was delivered to the launch site and SpaceX is working on a large renovation to replace vertical tanks for Starship tests and launch operations. Propane will be stored in horizontal methane tanks. The exact date of the new tank's operational launch is yet unknown. Recently, SpaceX's ambitions to colonize Mars and the reusability of Starship were disclosed by Elon Musk. According to him, the extremely heavy rocket can be used more frequently than the Starship because it can potentially be prepared for re-entry into space in an hour and returns to the launch site in roughly six minutes after launch. As the spacecraft needs to complete at least one orbit around the Earth before returning to the launch site, Starship reuse is currently restricted to once per 24 hours. This indicates that to colonize Mars in about three decades, ship production needs to be nearly an order of magnitude larger than booster production with 100 to 300 ships produced annually. This insight highlights the careful planning and scale required to achieve the lofty target of colonizing Mars in about three decades, highlighting the critical role that high-rate shipbuilding plays in this monumental undertaking. NASA astronauts Douglas Wheelock and Nicole Mann tested a replica of SpaceX's lift design for the Starship Lunar Lander recently, a lunar mission called Artemis III which aims to return humans to the moon by 2025, will employ the lift to move crew and equipment from the Starship lander to the lunar surface. A full-scale basket section with operational mechanical assemblies and crew interfaces is part of the Mark Up lift. Wheelock tested the lift's controls and operations as the basket traveled along a vertical rail system. The test was conducted by astronauts donning spacesuits which replicated the limitations of moving and working on the lunar surface. NASA claims that during the test, the astronauts were able to engage with an elevator system that resembled a trip, allowing them to provide insightful feedback from the crew while also seeing the hardware in action. Let's now talk about some of the most recent developments in science and technology. SpaceX successfully launched the US military spacecraft, the X-37B, on a Falcon Heavy rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The rocket's boosters broke away and returned to Earth after liftoff. SpaceX rockets 257 and 258 safely landed at Cape Canaveral Space Force stations. The X-37B, an autonomous reusable vehicle, resembles NASA's retired shuttle, but is smaller. The space shuttle, in contrast, had dimensions of more than 24M in width and 37M in length. The smallest and lightest orbital spacecraft ever flown is called X-37B. The 5,000 kg spacecraft is propelled by a single Aerojet AR-2 engine, which delivers 29.4 tons of thrust for maneuvering and deorbiting. The vehicle showcases several technologies, such as an upgraded avionics system, an autonomous guidance system, 
an increased thermal protection system and an updated airframe. It is believed that the Space Force possesses two Boeing, built 37B vehicles. The military uses the spacecraft mostly as orbital test beds to observe how instruments function and behave in space. The X-37B had previously launched five times on the United Launch Alliance's Atlas V and once on SpaceX's Falcon 9, but this was the first time it had taken off on a Falcon Heavy rocket. Several NASA scientific experiments were carried out by the U.S. military plane, designated Orbital Test Vehicle 7, which took out on Thursday. Since the mission's primary payloads were secret, we don't know a lot of specifics regarding the flight plans, target orbit, or objective. The plane was likely heading to a highly elliptical high inclination orbit at a much higher altitude than previous missions, based on navigational warnings, and the fact that it was launched on a Falcon Heavy rocket. The X-37B is extremely maneuverable and can change its orbit rapidly, making it challenging to track. Even though it was launched like a satellite, the spacecraft will eventually return to Earth and land on runways at Kennedy Space Center or Vandenberg Space Force Base. It's safe to presume that the spacecraft will be in orbit for a while, even if the duration of the most recent mission is unknown. Before this, every 637B mission lasted longer than seven months. After 908 days or nearly three years, in orbit, the sixth mission, which was launched in May 2020, landed in November 2022. That's all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give it thumbs up. It keeps us motivated to make such informative videos for all of you.